What's up, everybody? I'm Jack Slater, a.k.a. The Comic Outlaw. Yeah! And I hope you're ready, because we're going to do some classic Fantastic Four. Yeah, we're kicking it old school style. Fantastic Four, issue 109. And Annihilus is here, the living death who walks. Man, Stanley sure knows how to give a title sometimes. Anyways, the Fantastic Four have to jump back into the negative zone because a man named Janus decided to jump in there. And uh, yeah, he uh, basically absorbs negative energy. So this is the perfect place for him to grow in power. But he may have stepped on the wrong cape. And I'm telling you the truth on that because Annihilus is the main man in this universe. Or the main insect, basically. It's a long story. Anyways, Annihilus and him are about to face off. Now this is a little flashback right here. Flashback of an issue before an issue. Where the scientist named Janus uses a plastic weapon. Literally a plastic laser beam weapon. Knocks out Reed and jumps through the negative zone. Now uh, this area is full of a lot of danger. Including an antimatter center. So this place is extremely dangerous. This is like an H.P. Lovecraft nightmare. So... The negative man is facing off against Annihilus. And yeah, I was calling him the Mega Man, but uh, he's not going to be too mega after Annihilus gets through with him. Anyways, the Fantastic Four decides to get ready. They start packing up their gear. And they need kind of like backpacks because the gravity here works different. Reed goes on to explain that, yes, the negative man are, you know, did some damage, but Annihilus will destroy everything. That's just what Annihilus does. Now, these things are important. They're homing devices. They allow them to teleport back to where they're going this comes into play later and that's why i'm just throwing it out there now anyways they get ready they get packed up for the fight against annihilus and the nega man now annihilus is just taking this guy to school i mean the nega man has power but annihilus sits supreme in this world and now he finally respects him because he's willing to sacrifice the entire human race for his own life Annihilus thinks they're probably cut from the same cloth, so he kind of takes him in for now to be one of his servants. Anyways, the Fantastic Four are done getting ready. They got their homing devices, they got their backpacks, and they're ready to jump into the negative verse. They are ready to jump into the unknown. And as you can tell from them going from one place to another, this world is completely upside down and freaky. So Annihilus is kind of explaining the rules to everything. The rules to the negative zone and telling him about the antimatter zone where he'll probably get more powerful. To serve Annihilus, of course. Anyways, the Fantastic Four come out of nowhere. They start attacking. And, of course, Nega Man's really feeling himself. He's ego-tripping on this one. Annihilus is an ego-tripping. This guy could back up everything he does. He extinguishes the Human Torch's flame. Uses a beam, of course, then blocks it with a rock. Fires it back. And, of course... Annihilus is just outclassing them. I mean, they barely got away the last time. Reed is trying to figure out a plan. And of course, the phone rings, and it's Agatha Harkness. Wondering when she's going to pick up the child. She says she can't. She's stressed out because she has to stay at her post. Because she has no idea what's going to happen. Anyways, the Nega Man makes good on his promise and disappears to the antimatter zone. Where Thing... And the Human Torch are trying to score off against Annihilus. But he went and got his cosmic control in the rod. Now this rod does a lot of different things. Besides giving him an uber power boost. It also allows him to control the wills of the creatures here. And as you're about to see. The creatures here are just all kinds of weird. And uh, yeah. This comic book is brought to you by. We'll pay you $10,000 for this penny. But it won't show you which one it is. I love these old school posts. Don't you? gives it a taste of sophistication on this show anyways you can tell just look at this creature I mean he grabs the human torch and his powers are non and void I mean he, he is burning the hell out of this thing and it is not feeling it that's how strong these creatures are yeah and there's some other advertisement for uh, lifting weights and stuff go to your gym anyways the thing gets an idea he decides to turn back into his human form and slips right out of his hands. This is actually a pretty smart play by Benjamin. I see they actually fixed his underwear because the first time he turned in, he was actually grabbing his pants. That's an important thing when you're falling through the negative verse. Anyways, Annihilus is trying to basically have his way with Reed, doing whatever he can to stop him, destroy him, you know, basic Annihilus spiel. Of course, the Human Torch is trying to fire his way out and Reed is going after him. 
the negative man. And the negative man is actually, he's ego tripping. I'm going to just tell you that right now. He's absorbing power, but he's not absorbing enough. And then, of course, he turns on the goblins because he figures the Nihilist is probably going to destroy him one way or the other. See what it is with these guys? They team up, and they don't even last five minutes. That is just sad. Anyways, they managed to fire the injector seat, which is just freaking hilarious. I guess one of them got to the master control. Reed tries reaching him before he hits that gooey, gooey antimatter center. And uh, he dips into it, and it's just too much for him. He ends up disintegrating himself. Now, Reed has to save himself before he disintegrates. He uses his backpack and flies out towards the fight or thing, and the human torch is still going at it with that creature. Of course, Thing uses his powers and outsmarts the Nihilist temporarily. And then he goes out to take out the beast. And he gives him a good wallop. You know that it's clobber in time. And he just knocks that beast out. But Annihilus isn't done yet. Reed, of course, uses a gun to temporarily blind him. There's only two of them left. Johnny lost his. Well, Reed has actually lost his. He decides to stay behind. And see if he can handle Annihilus. Thing and Johnny walk in. Sue wonders where Reed is, and Reed is stuck there. He is stuck in the negative verse. A prisoner of the very zone he spent his whole time trying to get away from. What will happen the next time? Will he be rescued? We'll find out, won't we? And as always, I'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah.